how many of you have heard your concrete will crack? These horrible, unsightly, yucky things. Oh my God, they're so scary, right? But how many of you have been told this is what concrete does? Or you've been told there's nothing that you can do about it. How does that make you feel? Have you ever said that to someone else? How do you think it made them feel? Well, in this video, I'm gonna answer what if there's a different strategy out there. What if there's something that you don't know about or maybe the they out there, the others out there just don't know about. If you're an owner, an engineer, a contractor, or a supplier, then this video is for you. And I'm talking about fiber reinforced concrete today, and I'm gonna give you proof. I will talk about data. I will talk about strategies to implement this in real life. I will talk about the future as well. So there's a lot of things I didn't know at the beginning about fiber reinforced concrete. I was a big doubter of it. I asked tons and tons of questions, but after what I've learned today, I believe in it heavily. But I used to ask questions like, do fibers really work? Do you ever ask that? I know lots of people do. And you might ask, do fibers impact the surface finish of your concrete? I know I asked that. But I've worked on 30 different field projects now with fiber reinforced concrete and they've gone great. And there always were owners say, I don't want cracks. Is that you? Is that you? Do you not want cracks on your projects? So if that is, then maybe you should pay attention. Look, my name's Tyler Lay and I'm a concrete freak and I'm a structural engineer, a materials engineer, a professor, and we're talking about cracks today. And what I'd say cracks are the Darth Vader of concrete. I mean, seriously now, like, ah, they're scary, right? You might say, what do you think when you see a crack? You know, seriously, what do you think? Do you say they're not supposed to be there? Do you think maybe something is wrong or they're ugly or they're scary? Those are all things that people think that I've heard people say when they see a crack. So I'm talking about fiber reinforced concrete. I'm gonna talk about steel fibers today and I will talk about macro synthetic fibers today, plastic fibers, okay? And you put them inside your concrete when you are making it. And what happens is in the concrete, those fibers become distributed all over the place, okay? And they fight the cracks, right? They're kind of like Luke fighting Darth Vader, right? He's the fiber, that's the crack. Yeah, you get it. And so they're like little lightsabers everywhere inside the concrete, right? Like that's what I think of a mess. And this keeps the crack tight. And you're like, I don't believe you, Tyler. Well, here's a field project and it is two different concretes, the right and the left, they're an elevated slab. The one on the right just has rebar in it. And the one on the left has rebar plus fibers in it. And look at the difference in the size of the cracks. It's actually five times smaller when you use the rebar plus the fiber. That's pretty cool, right? Hans pumped. So would you like this on your project? Would you like smaller cracks? I know I would, because what I like to say is that if you can't see the crack, then does it really exist? Like that hmm. tree falling in the forest thing, right? But with cracks. So what are the downsides of fibers out there? Because, right, they can't be perfect, right? Well, they're going to increase your cost, so get ready for that. And most contractors are just not used to using them, so get ready for that. And they can make the concrete harder to place, but I will address some of this later on in the talk today. And only use them on projects where you really care about cracking. Like, you don't have to use them everywhere. But if you care about cracking, this might be a technology for you. So I'm going to ask this question. Would you pay extra for reducing cracks in your project? So please leave me a comment below about that. Like share your thoughts because a lot of people tell me that no one will pay for this. And I think there's people out there that will. So I don't know. See what you think. So now where's the data? That's kind of what you're saying to yourself, right? Okay, great, Tyler. Well, I'm going to answer this question. Do fibers really work? I'm also going to say, do fibers impact the surface finish of your concrete? But there's a big warning. Massive, massive warning we have to watch out for here. You may think out there that if some fiber is good, then more fiber must be even better. All right, and I'm gonna say that's not true. That's not true. Get that right out of your mind, because that's not true. And fibers are like a teeter-totter, all right? And on one side of the teeter-totter, you have the structural performance, the post-crack strength and the crack size. On the other side, you've got the placement and the finishing and the constructability. So this means that after you focus on one, then it is actually going to hurt the other. So you need to find the balance. And that's why, again, it's just like Star Wars, because in Star Wars, it's all about finding the balance. And remember, 
fibers. That's equals the force, right? The magic stuff that helps everybody. So let's talk about structural stuff first, okay? This post-crack strength and this crack size, all right? And so we're gonna compare two different scenarios. One cracking with just rebar and the other cracking with rebar plus fiber in it. Compare them to one another. And we're gonna use this test called the split beam test. This is the test we developed to really try to better understand fiber. It is a flexural beam that actually in the top and the bottom has these wedges. These wedges actually fit this platent. That's why it can be loaded from the top and the bottom. And the wedges are special. They're not connected. See how they're not connected there in the center? So as you push from the top, they open up, they cause a crack, and you can get repeatable crack sizes again and again and again on this test. It's pretty sweet. And this is only supported by the platens here, there and there and there. So there it is floating in the air. You might say, whoa, 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 isn't there self-weight pulling this down? Yeah, but it, it's not very much and it's not that big of a deal. So in the center of this beam, we've embedded a number three bar. It's in there because, um, yeah, it's to hold it together once the concrete cracks. And then we're gonna have also a scenario where we have fiber. So we'll have sometimes when it's just rebar and sometimes when it is rebar plus fibers. You're with me. You're with me, I hope you're with me. All right, so here's a video of this in action. It's sped up a little bit, and what you can see there in the center, right there, is the crack extending, extending, extending. We use a crack card to measure the size of the crack and compare it to the load, and do that again and again and again, and we get data that looks like this. On the x-axis is the load or the stress. On the y-axis is the crack size that we measured, and we have one fiber there that's there with two different dosages. One has just the rebar, then the rebar bar plus four pounds, eight pounds and 12 pounds. We're gonna zoom into this area. There it is right there, right? We have these different regions. Now I'm gonna warn you right up front that I'm gonna be talking in pounds per cubic yard or also volume. So if you're a metric person, then think in volume 0.25% or 0.5 or 0.75% by volume. So at the very beginning down here, look at this. Look at this, there's the rebar, and there's all the ones with fibers, from a high dosage to a low dose, and they all do great. And then as they go up, then some of the fibers start to perform differently, depending on the dosage level, and as it goes even higher, some of the fibers start to pull out or start to fail. But what happens if I have about a 0.04 inch crack or a one millimeter size crack? inside of our system, right? And I'm gonna compare that with a crack card. So what I'm showing here is first, that is the crack size with no fiber. That is the crack size with four pounds, rebar plus four pounds per cubic yard, 50% smaller crack size. Eight pounds, 75% smaller crack size. 12 pounds, 90% smaller crack size. Booyah, that's pretty amazing, right? That's just summarized there if you like to see it in numbers, screen capture it, whatever you wanna do and look at. So this is pretty cool, right? Pretty awesome. So you might ask yourself now, how do different types of fibers compare, right? Cause not all fibers are maybe the same out there. How do they compare? You may be asking yourself that. So I'm gonna compare these five different fibers and don't worry, I'll publish work on a lot more fibers, but these are five different ones made of different materials and different geometry, like different shapes, different anchorages, all kinds of cool stuff. And here's all of them compared at one dosage. Now I've done it at other dosages, but I'm gonna compare it at one. And what we notice here is at the bottom one, at low stresses, all the fibers do great. They all help, they all reduce cracking. This is amazing, that's amazing. All fibers reduce cracking, like that's awesome, right? Yeah, baby. So, but at higher forces there, at higher stresses, you start to see that there's kind of a difference in performance. What am I talking about? Well, that is a kind of group of fibers that are still better than using rebar, but that look at that bottom down there. Look at that group. That group is performing better, and we have some steel fibers performing about the same as the plastic. That's cool. What did we learn? All fibers reduce cracking, amazing. And as cracks get larger, then the type of fiber becomes really important. Really, really, really important. And some plastic fibers can perform the same as the steel, depending on their geometry and their design. That's pretty amazing, right? And not all fibers are created equal. That is a big deal. Now let's go back to the other side of the teeter-totter, the placement and finishing constructability, because we gotta make sure we can build this stuff. So do fibers impact your surface finish? That is a big question that you might have and other people might have out there as well. It's because we don't want fibers or 
fiber slabs or whatever like this, like hairy slabs. See the fiber sticking up? No, boy, no. We don't want that. Like, oh my gosh, yuck, yuck. So we're going to use a test called the float test. And this test is pretty simple. You're going to place concrete in a form that is about three foot by two foot by three inches deep. We're going to um, use a template to put some holes in it, some one inch diameter and one inch deep holes. That's to simulate aggregates being plucked out of the surface of the concrete. And then we're going to use this float that's trimmed. Notice it's trimmed and it only runs on the surface of the concrete. We do it forward and back. So forward is one pass, back was two, and we only look there at the center. And what we're looking for is the measure of the number of passes for two things to happen. Number one, to close the holes. That's one thing, but then there's also number two, to create a smooth finish. That's a big deal. So here's an example of closing up the holes. Here's zero passes. Here's after two passes. See the holes getting smaller? That's good. Four passes, Holes are gone, party time, right? And then we also look at surface texture. When is the surface texture? Um, and we don't need perfection. We're usually shooting between about 10 to 30% overall surface texture on our concrete. So here, let's look at some data, some examples here. Here is a, a, a mixture before we've done any passes, four pounds per cubic yard, and here it is after four passes. And here it is after seven passes. See how it's getting smoother and smoother and smoother? That's pretty cool, right? Now let's look at 12 pounds per cubic yard. Much, much higher dosage. Here's zero passes. There is four passes, and there is 12 passes, and it's still not quite there yet. See how it took more passes with more fibers? That's a big deal. That's cool. We can quantify that. More effort's gonna be required to finish this higher fiber dosage, and that's a big deal. So when more effort's out there, that means your field crew has to work harder to make you great concrete. And when the field crew has to work harder, this can cause people to want to add water. They're gonna add water to your concrete, just being honest. Like, they're gonna add water to your truck, they're going to add water and spray it on the surface of the concrete, and that's not good. This hurts the quality of your concrete. We don't want that. That does not need to happen. We need to design our concretes to be easy to finish. That's what we're shooting for. And so you want fibers that have a low number of passes in this float test so they can perform well. So I'm comparing a bunch of different fibers out there, and on the far left right here, this is one with no fibers in it, and every one of these at the bottom is a different type of fiber. And this is the number of passes, and it's just like golf. You want a low number on this chart, and their green line is the same as not having any fibers on it at all. This red line is kind of the edge of where they would want to add water. Now, what do we learn here? Well, typically, as fiber dosage goes up, then, so, then finishability gets harder and harder and harder to make happen. What else did we learn? Not all fibers finish the same. That is a big deal. Some of them, look at that. Look at that would not finish at all at the high dosages. Don't put those in your projects. At about four pounds per cubic yard or 0.25% by volume, there was no difference, no difference in performance as in they all finished beautifully at that low dose. That's pretty cool except for one steel fiber out there. So what did we learn? How can this help you? Well, 0.25% by volume has a minimal impact on finishing, and that is a big deal. That's a huge value to you. And as fiber dosage goes up, your finishing effort is gonna go up, and that's gonna make people wanna add water. And not all fibers are created equal. That's a big deal. So how can this help your project? I mean, seriously, how can this make your life better? Fibers are a great tool to reduce cracks. That's big time true. And 0.25% by volume has minimal impact on your finishing of your concrete, and that's why it's a safe choice, right? And this dosage can still reduce cracking by anywhere between 50% to 80%, depending on the type of fiber that you choose out there, which is amazing. But how can you build confidence? Let's say somebody out there is saying like, Tyler, I just don't believe you. Or Tyler, I, I believe you, but on my project, they don't wanna do this because this happened to me like twice lately, all right? And what can you do about that? Well. You can use the float test because it's pretty easy to build, just some two by fours and some plywood, and you can test stuff in trial batch concrete and see how it performs. You can also have a trial placement. Just go out there and have them place a slab. Yeah, like a slab like this. Have them finish it for themselves and use this low dose of fiber and see how it is for them. 
because it should be pretty good. And there might be some dialing in they have to do for their mix design, but by and large, it should finish out pretty well. And you can limit this fiber dosage to 0.25% by volume, all right? But what's the future out there? Because this is cool and all, but there's an even better, brighter tomorrow for you. Not all fibers are created equal. Remember when I said that earlier? That is a big deal. If we could standardize the float test and the split beam test, as in make them so anyone could run them anywhere, because they're pretty simple tests, then we could use these tests to create performance categories for different fibers out there. What am I talking about? Well, you might say, I want 50% crack reduction and no impact on my finishing. That might be what you say. And for one product, they might be able to do that three pounds per cubic yard. Another product would use a different dosage, and the third product would use another dosage. And that just might be the way it is, okay? And that doesn't mean they don't cost different. That just means they perform different because they're different fibers out there. So if you're interested in this, actually, I have a document that I've written for um, a bunch of state DOTs, and I have a link to it below and you can download it. It's super easy to get. And in it, I talk about a pool fund study. That's where I'm getting a bunch of states together, to DOTs, to fund this, to understand this, to build these specifications, then it helps everyone. So ask your state out there to join the pool fund um, if you know someone that works for the state DOT. So I hope you like this video. If you wanna help me out, number one thing you can do is watch my videos. Number two, you can share these videos with other people that you think would enjoy them. Please like, subscribe, leave me a comment, check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Concrete.Tyler, and of course, check out my amazing website, ConcreteFreaks.com, where I've got all kinds of awesome, cool, crazy stuff. Take care, my friends. See ya!